Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Aaron Dykes, on this broadcast of the InfoWars Nightly News. Today is Monday, April 9th, 2012. Coming up, Rob Dew speaks with InfoWars researcher, writer, Patrick Henningsen on the Fast and Furious case and new breaking info on the Trayvon Martin shooting. First up in the news, will more than 5 billion people be killed in a post-industrial collapse of civilization? That's what some researchers are saying, echoing the propaganda from the Club of Rome dating back to 1972 and a computer model compiled by MIT researchers as part of the same project. It was covered in the SHTF plan blog and many other publications. It's based around Australian physicist Graham Turner, uh, who's written on the subject, and my article is up at Infowars.com. Researchers claim only global government can save humanity, echoing MIT Club of Rome model for collapse. And indeed, it is at the heart uh, behind all the rhetoric about global government. Uh, they're predicting that human consumption patterns, population growth, as well as energy consumption will all drive uh, a peak point at which society will crumble and fall and many, many people will die as a result. Uh, the only problem is they admit that it's all about world government. Unlimited economic growth, they say, is still possible if world governments enact policies and invest in green technologies that help limit the expansion of our ecological footprint. Of course, it would not be uh, unlimited economic growth under that model. It would be a containment of the economy. It's all about Mari Strong's Agenda 21, a post-industrial civilization. They want to clamp down on humanity, not empower us. Not to say that population or our use of energy couldn't be a problem, but we're talking about the elites driving the issue back since the days of Robert Malthus, uh, who then predicted in the late 1700s that the population would outgrow the food supply. Uh, it was actually just a way to start cracking down on people through uh, early eugenics models. He also said we should court the return of the plague. Let's take a look at the graph itself uh, showing population rising, rising to more than 9.5 billion and then gradually dying off to only about 4.5 billion, uh, which is approximately the 1980 point. That's a death of at least 5 billion. If population rises even further, it could be even worse. However, uh, this model, again, is not new. It's from 1972. It was criticized in the early 80s from the LaRouche Pub's Executive Intelligence Review, as well as economists uh, Gunnar Myrtle and others. Uh, let's see, the Intelligence Review itself said, Petchy later confessed that the club's new tool had been pre-programmed to deliver the desired conclusion. The motive for this deception, Petchy contends, is purely an altruistic one. A noble lie provided uh, to goad them into the shock treatment necessary to compel nations to adopt measures of population control. And then the economist Gunnar Myrtle says the use of mathematical equations and a huge computer which registers alternatives of abstractly conceived policies by a world simulation model may impress the innocent general public, but has little, if any, scientific validity. This sort of model is actually a new tool for mankind. The idea that it's a new tool for mankind is unfortunately not true. It's a type we have for a long time had too much of. And it's just like Al Gore's uh, correlation proje projections between CO2 and global temperatures. Uh, there may be a correlation, but the cause and effect is not really there. And in the case of these models, they've put in inputs uh, to prove the results they'd like to have. What they're ruling out is all our options for alternative energy. It assumes peak oil, which itself we can cast doubt on. Bloomberg just this year reported that peak oil, uh, that myth is really drying up as they've got all these new discoveries, shale, deep water crude, and on and on, not to mention all the resources in places like Alaska. Secondarily, as the Forbes blog points out about this update on the Club of Rome model. Uh, it's saying that you can't use alternative minerals or anything else, metals or anything for alternative fuels when we know we could uh, get into these models. So it's really just assuming that the elite will continue to drive us into squalor and ultimately our own death or 
We have the option of embracing this world government. I think it's kind of disgusting. You can make up your own mind by reading the studies. It's interesting to note that the first person to put out the article on Australian physicist Graham Turner was the Smithsonian Magazine, who themselves did not disclose their conflict of interest in hosting the 40th anniversary of the Limits to Growth, which is the original publication by the Club of Rome on March 1st, 2012, there in Washington, D.C., uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. And of course, this is at the time when all these people are calling for global government models on different pretexts. You've seen it in the recent weeks. I won't say too much more about it. We turn now to Melinda Gates saving thousands of women's lives through contraception. And she's obviously getting heat. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is getting heat for all their activity on population control throughout the world. They're pushing for GMOs and a whole lot more. I see all kinds of uh, critical articles written every week, every day on various related topics there. But uh, here in this one reported in the Seattle PI, uh, really the hometown to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, she hinges the whole thing around how she's Catholic. And so if she represents uh, birth control, it's not controversial, even though so many Catholics have come out strongly on this issue. Some people think contraceptives are code for abortion, which they're not, Melinda Gates said. Some people people are uncomfortable because contraceptives have to do with sex. Some people worry that the real goal is to control populations. Well, it's admitted from all their secret billionaire meetings where Bill, where Bill Gates, David Rockefeller, Soros, Ted Turner, and the rest of them, Oprah Winfrey, meet to discuss how to control the population. And the meetings are always led by Bill Gates. But this time, it's not Bill Gates out in front, it's Melinda Gates. But then going back to the Club of Rome article uh, about how we have to die because of their economic models, well, don't you remember the Bill Gates speech at, TED, at the TED Talk in 2010, where he has his own formula for how one of these numbers has to get down to zero, kind of hinting that population's the best one to go with? Can we show that clip now? So let's look at each one of these and see how we can get this down to zero. Uh, probably one of these numbers is going to have to get pretty near to zero. Uh, that's back from high school algebra. But let's, let's take a look. Uh, first, we've got population. Uh, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. And so he also admits that vaccines will be used to lower the population. But what it's really about, just like the quote where Bill Gates said, uh, hire 10 teachers and kill one granny, it's about trade-offs. It's about this ethical debate of what you're willing to give up to hold your place in society. It's not about real alternatives. It's not finding real ways uh, to change things. It's about what are you gonna give up to live under the elite control paradigm? Well, they really want us all dead. They want no more than two billion, some of them even less. Uh, of course, you are familiar with the Georgia Guidestones, if you've seen this program before, where they say to keep humanity in balance with nature, you need no more than 500 million. Just crazy. Uh, but even crazier than that is, of course, the audio that was all over the blogosphere today about the Black Panthers, uh, the new Black Panther Party that is calling for an out and out race war. Uh, let's go to that clip right now. Black Power, Brother Sean. This is Sister Michelle, Chief of Staff for Tampa, St. Petersburg, Tampa, New Black, Black Power. Power. Black Power, I just want to say to all the listeners that's on this phone call, if you are having any doubt about getting suited, booted, and armed up for this race war that we in that has never ended, let me tell you something. The things that's about to happen to these honkies, these crackers, these pigs, these pink people, these mother purple people, it has been long overdue. Yeah, but what she said was right. We got to suit up and boot up. We got to suit up and boot up and get prepared. For the war that we're in, all this stuff got to boil over. And all your greats talked about there having to be bloodshed involved with revolution. True revolution means some bloodshed. So there's blood being spilled because there's a new life that is beyond this bloodshed. There's a new reality that is built upon your original African principles and spiritualities and values and norms that is beyond this bloodshed. But we got to go through it. And as the scriptures say, you got to cross it. We're going to have to cross the Red Sea. You're going to have to cross the Red 
sea. I know y'all thought it was talking about some sea in some Middle Eastern part of the world. Hell no. We're talking about some blood. You're going to have to cross some blood and go through some blood and some battles. And there, there are those who wish they could stand in this hour to see the destruction of the devil's world and the devil's society. And I ain't talking about no dude underneath the ground with a pitchfork and pantyhose. I'm talking about that blonde head, blue eyed, sometimes brown eyed Caucasian walking around with a mindset, a demonistic mindset, and the nature to do evil and brutality. I say to everyone that is on this call right now, I'm coming out of the gates like that greyhound on that rabbit. And his prize, my prize right now this evening is going to be the bounty, the arrest, dead or alive, for George Zimmerman. You feel me? To every brother, to every female. I am for violence. If nonviolence means we continue postponing a solution to the American black man's problem just to avoid violence. You feel me? It's time to wake up. I don't know how else... It's, it's in me to fight. It's in me to, to raise up soldiers. It's in me that every time my feet touch the ground, the state of Florida, these crackers, they scared. That's, I'm telling you right now, I'm kind of pissed off right now that the state of Florida ain't on fire. This could not have happened in L.A. because some brothers up there are not scared to riot. This could not have happened in St. Petersburg, Florida, where the, the black men over there ain't scared to kill a cracker. This is real. We're attacked anywhere in the world. We would defend ourselves by any means necessary. We have proposed and we're pushing forward with a national strike and walk out on this cracking on this beast and on these bastards. We are proposing and pushing for our people that you hit them in the pocket where it hurts. You starve capitalism. Since this racism that's being perpetuated and this brutality that's being perpetuated and this murder that's being perpetuated is built on the table legs of capitalism, you got to starve capitalism. And what you're saying is real. An, an act of war has been declared on us. We, we don't have no choice but to fight. But I, I want to say that we have to be trained how to fight. See, the whole purpose of the maneuvers that's happening in Sanford is to train in self-defense because many of us think we're prepared for a battle, just like many of us think we're prepared for a fight. But if you are not training, if you're not stocking up water, if you're not stocking up food, if you're not stocking up weapons and artillery and survival, books and gas masks and flashlights and canteens and uh, re ready to eat meals and all that. Thing. If you're not stocking that up, I don't know how serious we are right now. Absolutely, we want the complete removal of capitalism. Why? Because capitalism sets up a class structure and a class society, as I said in the beginning of the haves and have-nots, that is the pivotal point is racism. It is racism that keeps and perpetuates a capitalistic motion. And so, yes, we want capitalism completely eradicated, especially from the minds and hearts and dealings of black people. Do not buy into the race war. We don't need to fight with each other. Uh, our real problem is the elite at the top. Just as we have people who've sold out at the elite level, sold out humanity, want us all dead, even though they have the same skin color as many of the people in this country, other leaders are capable of selling out too. And don't trust anyone telling you you have to go on a killing spree and start a sea of blood uh, because one person they've hived up in the media was killed in a questionable incident. Of course the Trayvon thing was tragic. I wish he hadn't been killed, but we don't need to start a race war over this. Uh, and besides, stuff happens every week, every day, Day, uh, to individuals, including many black people who are not, should not have been killed, whether it's police or other uh, black on black crime, whatever it is. Why are they hyping this incident up? And the immortal words of Rodney King, can we not just get along? I mean, really, we don't need to go to this level. It's, it's, it's unproductive. It's counterproductive. It plays into election politics, and I hope it stops somewhere soon, hopefully well short of what the so-called new Black Panther Party people have called for, if indeed they're not just provocateurs in their own right. Meanwhile, in the election campaign, things are seemingly closing in for Mitt Romney, and yet Ron Paul, who couldn't win, can't win, never could even get a vote, can't even win a precinct, continues to draw record crowds. Now that record crowd is more than 10,000 people. That's at the recent UCLA rally. Uh, I believe we have a clip of that. 
and we could show that there. Uh, meanwhile, he had a 5,000-person rally in Illinois, a 5,200-person rally in Wisconsin in recent days, uh, and we spent more than an hour researching this. Rob Dew led the effort. Uh, Mitt Romney's largest crowd that at least we could find was in Idaho back on March 1st. It was only 2,200. Mitt Romney, who's supposedly a sure thing for the nomination, his largest crowd is a mere 2,000 plus. Meanwhile, Ron Paul consistently draws 5,000, 10,000, uh, or several thousand. Uh, I think you remember our coverage a few months back, a few weeks back anyway, where at the same time Ron Paul was drawing 5,000, Santorum and Romney were drawing a couple hundred, Newt Gingrich was drawing 70 people at events he was doing. Just ask yourself why, why Ron Paul can't be covered. Meanwhile, we turn to other news where psychiatric drugs continue to be part of the problem, not the answer, even though the elites who are steering our society want us to do otherwise. Paul Joseph Watson and Alex Jones report on the antidepressant drugs causing epidemics of mania, mayhem, and murder, spotlighting the most recent cop-killing episode in Austin, uh, where the man accused of the shooting was apparently on the anti-anxiety drug Xanax, as well as tequila. Definitely not a good recipe. But then later in the article, they go on to cite a laundry list of cases that were apparently tied to the psychiatric drugs, including Ed Harris, uh, one of the trigger men of the Columbine shooting, 13-year-old Chris Fetters, who killed his favorite aunt while on Prozac. 12-year-old Chris Pittman, uh, who killed his grandparents while on Zoloft. 13-year-old Matthew Miller hung himself uh, after taking Zoloft. 15-year-old Jared Vicker uh, stabbed his grandmother 61 times after being on Paxil for five days. 15-year-old Kip Kinkle uh, shot his parents while on Prozac. And the list just goes on and on. We don't have time to read all these, but certainly uh, people have to begin Again, questioning the use of these antidepressant drugs. They're not the solution, even though uh, new report shows more than 100,000 active duty Army troops are on medication, and that's supposed to allow them to deal with their post-traumatic stress disorder. I think it's pretty dangerous, and is that part of the cause of what we're seeing where they're killing people in Afghanistan and other places? That's a larger question, but we have never medicated our troops to the extent we are doing now, and I don't believe the current increase in suicides and homicides in the military is a coincidence. That from Bart Billings, a former military psychologist, but Natural News, J.D. Hayes, reports that mental health disorders mean high-profit business for prescription drug cartels, uh, all the more reason because the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, uh, which is due to come out in May of 2013, is virtually a Bible for pres prescribing pharmacologicals for all known psychological disorders. And it's got thousands of uh, entries in this 900-page manual. Virtually every one of them relies on these pharmaceutical solutions, just as Aldous Huxley warned about in his Brave New World, that we learn to love our servitude uh, through drugging ourselves, basically. Monsanto threatens the, to sue the entire state of Vermont, all because they want to label genetically modified foods. Oh no, big danger to let consumers know what they're eating, what's on the end of their fork. Uh, people never look at what's on the end of their fork. Uh, as it was said in Naked Lunch, Monsanto is going mad over the proposal, which would also make them unable to label their productions as natural, naturally made, naturally grown, or all natural, if in fact they are not. It's a deceptive label you've probably already seen out there a great deal. It doesn't mean non-genetically modified. It just means it has a flavor of naturalness to it. Anyway, for the corporation, it would seem that moving products and making money is much more a worthwhile venture than telling its consumers exactly what they are consuming. Another natural news article cites the EPA study uh, where GMO insecticide is approved and now is being responsible for killing off bees and contaminating the entire food chain. Meanwhile, a new study shows that the EPA approved GMO insecticide is responsible for killing off bees and contaminating the entire food chain. Early last year, documents leaked were obtained by a Colorado beekeeper that exposed the EPA's illegitimate approval of clothianidin, a highly toxic pe pesticide manufactured by Bayer and the crop science department. 
The regulatory agency knew it was capable of killing off bees, uh, but approved it anyway. Now a new study out of Purdue University in Indiana has not only confirmed this, but once again has shown that clothiandin is killing off bees and its toxic Toxicity is systematic throughout the entire food chain. It could one day lead to the catastrophic destruction of the food supply. More hopeful reporting there as South American leaders say the war on drugs has failed, that prohibition is not the correct strategy and it's destroying their economies and their hope for the future. The decision by Perez Molina to speak out against it is seen as highly significant and not without political risk. Polls suggest that the vast majority of Guatemalans oppose decriminalization, but Perez Molina's comments are seen as many as helping to usher in a new era of debate. They will be studied closely by foreign policy experts who detect that Latin American leaders are shifting their stance on prohibition following decades of drug wars that have left hundreds of thousands dead. I believe it's more than 30,000 just in Mexico alone. Mexico's president, Felipe Calderon, has called for a national debate on the issue. Last year, Juan Manuel Santos, Colombia's president, told the observer if legalizing drugs curtailed the power of organized criminal gangs that had thrived during prohibition, the world thinks that's the solution, and I welcome it. But recall that the U.S. stopped Mexico from decriminalizing many drugs, including marijuana and cocaine, and steered them away from that as a solution. Why? Let's look back to the financial crisis. This was only one of many revelations to hit the news wires, many others reporting at the risk of their lives long before this stuff hit the news wires, that drug money saved the banks in the global crisis, claims the UN advisor. It also propped up the stock exchange in the years before the global crisis. Drug money worth billions of dollars kept the financial system afloat at the height of the global crisis. The UN drugs and crimes are told the observer. And look at it. It's why do you think they're letting this stuff come across uh, the border? Why do you think they're giving them immunity? Because it's going straight to Wall Street so they can launder it and prop up all the other scams they're running. Meanwhile, Patrick Henningsen has a report from a couple days ago. More furious U.S. soldiers trafficking arms, drugs to D agents posing as Los Zetas. And of course, Rob Dew and Patrick Henningsen are just going to discuss this further on the other side of the break. Uh, but part of the story includes that they not only tra tried to trade these weapons and drugs, but they offered full combat training for more than 40 people they believed to be cartel members of Los Zetas uh, and uh, told them basically where they could steal guns and on and on. And this is a bizarre case. But it's strange because we know they've been protecting the Las Vegas cartel, and yet they're stinging on these troops who are allegedly engaged in this stuff. Who knows what's going on, but it's all going down. There's so much happening at that border zone, so many different hypocrisies. It's something you're going to have to look into for yourself, but it's all over the news as well. We turn now to our daily quote before we come back with that Patrick Henningsen interview, and it's from Congressman Lewis T. McFadden back in 1932. We have, in this country, one of the most corrupt institutions the world has ever known. I refer to the Federal Reserve Board. This evil institution has impoverished the people of the United States and has practically bankrupted our government. It has done this through the corrupt practices of the moneyed vultures who control it. And that's it for the InfoWars Nightly News. Don't forget to support us by subscribing at PrisonPlanet.tv. And don't forget to check out our reporter contest as well. We're trying to find fresh new content and use Synergy to our advantage while we still have the internet available. We'll be back after this with Patrick Henningsen and Lord Rob Dew. Thanks for watching. I'm announcing our biggest contest ever. And we're looking for people who love freedom and who want to be all in in the resistance to tyrants. So you say you want to fight the new world order. Why, if you were on the radio, if you were Alex Jones, you'd really kick some globalist ass. Well, here's your chance. We're hiring not one, but two new reporters whose reports are going to be on the radio, whose reports are going to be on the nightly news, who will even anchor the show. If you're ready, here's your chance to step into my shoes, and I hope you surpass what I've done. Two winners, $10,000 in prizes, and a shot to be a reporter inside the InfoWars.com command center. 
we're looking to hire one male reporter and one female reporter. And when you win, you win $5,000. Your video gets seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on YouTube, and you get put into the very front of the running to be hired as a reporter slash anchor right here in our operation. Do you have what it takes to be the next Info Warrior? The rules are posted below me here and at InfoWars.com. This is a big deal. You know, the globalists are expanding their global empire, but at the same time, the people are waking up all over the world. We've expanded our operations in the last year. We've added the nightly news five nights a week. We're making more special reports. We're reaching 15 million people every week. In a year, I want that to be 30 million. This is your chance to join the team. I want to see what you can do. But a big hint is this. Can your news piece make the news? Does it get people's attention? Does it educate people? Does it open minds? That's more important than being beautiful or speaking with perfect eloquence as an orator. All of that is important. But we're looking for people that have that magic spark, that fire of liberty in their heart, because I want you to join our team. I want to give you a launch pad so you can really take off and engage the globalist. And if this works, we'll have contests all the time and we'll continue to build this operation. I'm involved in a talent search, looking for people who have the fires of liberty burning in their hearts and their minds. You've got until April 30th to complete your news report and then we'll announce the winners one week later. Are you gonna join the info war? Do you have what it takes? It's up to you. All serious entries will be posted on InfoWars.com. So everybody wins. You're getting the message of liberty out, and that's what really matters. But in the final equation, it's not about showing Alex Jones what you got. It's about showing the world and the globalist that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Join me in the info war. So you say you want to fight the info war. You say you want to go head up against the new world order. You can do a better job than Alex Jones. I know you can. And here's your chance to prove your mettle. I really enjoy it when the globalists try to poison us and, uh, well, we resist them via a free market system. Hello, my fellow Info Warriors. Alex Jones here, introducing you to the ProPure family of gravity-fed filters. Now, you know that the globalists are filling our water with radioactive isotopes, fluoride, lead, mercury, arsenic. And one of the few systems that can efficiently and economically remove or reduce down to non-detectable levels, these poisons are gravity-fed filters. And ProPure is the top of the line. Their filters are impregnated with silver, a natural antibiotic. On top of that, they're bigger, so they filter faster. You don't have to prime these the first time you use them. It's amazing. Go to InfoWars.com and click on the shopping cart link uh, to see the entire family of these babies. Now, the fluoride they add to our water is so tiny that most filters can't cut it out. But ProPure has their system that will, again, reduce it to non-detectable levels, almost get all of it out of there. That's also available. And if you look at the different systems they offer, the ProPure big brush finish is on a stand, so it's easier on a table or at your restaurant or wherever you have it to go up with a glass or a mug and fill it up. Then there's this big baby right here, the ProPure King large version. Got a lot of different options that come with it. Also, they have the ProPure Big, probably one of the best values out there. And of course, it's burnished stainless steel. And then what I use on my 
my RV, something that's great for your hunting cabin or the back porch, is the Pro Pure Traveler. Small and portable, but packs a huge punch, cleans out all that garbage. They also have a glass sight spigot, so you don't have to take the top off and look in the bottom area to see how much water. You can see how fast it's filtering with this optional uh, system. The globalist obviously are hitting us through our water. It's time to take control of our lives. It's time to not give our children and families these poisons. And these systems cut it down to non-detectable levels across the board. ProPure is the name. I only promote what I believe in. And I use ProPure in my home and my office. And I recommend that you check out the information on ProPure at InfoWars.com. We already have the lowest price at InfoWars.com on the ProPure Gravity Filter System. But when you add in the 10% off when InfoWarriors use the product code WATER at InfoWars.com, nobody can top it. So again, it's a win-win-win. Stop drinking the poison water. Uh, checkmate the globalists when it comes to your health and support InfoWars.com and the work we're doing here. You know, many revolutionaries rob banks and things and kidnap people for funds. We promote in the free market the products we use that are about preparedness. That's how we fund this revolution against the New World Order in our move to restore our constitutional republic and a spirit of 1776 worldwide. Check it out at InfoWars.com. ProPure, top of the line, number one, most powerful and effective and economical gravity-fed water system in the world. ProPure, available, discounted at InfoWars.com. Don't forget product code WATER to save 10%. It's the latest generation, years in development. ProPure is the name. And we are back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. I'm sitting in doing a little bit of the interview section for Aaron while he's out writing more articles. And the guy never stops working. He's a, he's a force to be reckoned with out there, the Blitzschneck. So uh, earlier in the broadcast, he covered uh, the article that Patrick Henningsen wrote, More Furious, U.S. Soldiers Trafficking Arms, Drugs to DEA Agents Posing as Los Zetas. Very disturbing article. Um, I read it uh, and I heard him talk to Alex on Thursday, but I thought it was important enough to bring back up again just to keep putting it out there in the, uh, the blogosphere and seeing if we can make heads or tails of this. Patrick, thanks for joining us. Yeah, nice to be with you, Rob. So what tipped you off to this uh, article here, uh, More Furious? How did you, what, what, what caught your attention on it and um, what made you write this article? Uh, the original tip I got from was from the uh, Minuteman Pack, which is a big border security uh, immigration issue uh, website and political action group. And they had the initial blog, and there was a link to the official uh, complaint, which was at the Department of Justice, South Texas District Court. So I clicked on that, and there was the story, uh, one of the most fascinating and bizarre stories I've seen in recent uh, years regarding trafficking over the border uh, and also drugs, Mexican drug cartels, U.S. Army soldiers, active duty, uh, Afghanistan. It all comes together in this story. It reads like a very dark John Grisham novel. Yeah, and to me, it's like, where are the, quote, bad guys? You know, we've got U.S. Army. There are troops. We have to support them. And then we have DEA agents that are supposed to be fighting this war on drugs. There's no, there's no bad guys here. It's like we're creating our own problem. Hmm. Yeah, one hand, clearly, as, as Alex Jones put it on air Friday morning, we spoke about this story. Uh, one, clearly, one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing in this. And, you know, it's very difficult in the world of drugs and the world of drug enforcement. You have a thing called the informant. So there are literally hundreds or thousands of FBI informants, uh, DEA informants, and people who are on the books of the federal agencies who are supposedly, some are undercover and others are actually members of uh, Los Zetos uh, drug cartel or of members of gangs. And they are on the books uh, giving information. So when a deal is going down and if there are uh, in, uh, federal agents investigating, in some cases they don't know the identity of all these informants. And obviously, when the deal goes down, then they will go and they'll they'll then say, uh, um, my handler is such and such, 
at the FBI's head offices or the head of the DEA uh, because their uh, identities need to be confidential, uh, apparently, for their security because there are moles and rats within the FBI and within the DEA and within the gangs themselves. Yeah, it says here uh, in your article, this is, I guess, an AP Huffington Post, Kevin Corley was discharged from the Army on March 13th, according to Army Human Resources. Your article comes out April 5th. So he didn't waste any time uh, reaching out to his network and coming up with, what, 500 pounds of, of marijuana? I mean, what are the details of this particular sting? Well, uh, basically, Cor Corley was uh, the head of security for the gang. Uh, in this gang is also other members of his family, uh, other Corleys, uh, who are based out of South Carolina. Uh, now, Corley uh, was operating uh, out of Texas. I'm not sure the details of where he got his five... 100 pound half a ton consignment of marijuana. And also, what was what's also interesting is after he, he managed to bring the uh, half a ton of marijuana to South Carolina, and after the DEA apprehended this truck full of marijuana and then let the, uh, the Corley gang uh, drive on while the truck was stopped, um, the Corleys were back uh, doing business uh, only days or weeks later. Um, and, and their business included offering uh, wet work, which is uh, uh, murder for hire, contract services, and also Kevin Corley, interestingly enough, was a drill sergeant for the 4th Brigade in the 4th Infantry based at Fort Carson in Colorado. And they were deployed on multiple tours in Afghanistan. And you also find the 4th, it's an elite uh, combat strike force based out of Fort Carson. He offered to train 40 Los Zetas. U.S. military U.S. military training standard using U.S. military manuals with U.S. military weapons, which he was happy to provide to them so long as they would get rid of the serial serial numbers on the guns, for instance, so they couldn't be traced back to him or back to his uh, stockade in uh, at Fort Carson, quite possibly. So uh, there are all, all kind of uh, things going on here, and it's very difficult to tell who was who. For all we know, Kevin Corley himself could be an informant, um, but, and maybe sometimes informants have to do hard time uh, after they're convicted in order to keep their cover and to protect the identities of these other informants in the DEA or the FBI. But in the, in, in the end, Rob, it boils down to uh, an extremely dirty business going on and a lot of people using the cover of the law enforcement agencies in order to traffic narcotics or to traffic uh, prostitutes or to do all sort of manner of illegal activities like this. Yeah, which brings us to another article that we covered earlier. War on drugs has failed, say Latin American leaders. Watershed Summit will admit that prohibition has failed and call for more nuanced and liberalized tactics. So that way you don't have your, your, arm, your armed forces or your federal agencies out there um, you know, playing possum with each other as, as to who's doing what. I mean, it, it, it's crazy. It's, and um, I think it's per Perez Molina writes, the prohibition paradigm that inspires mainstream global drug policy is, to base, is based on a false premise. premise. The global drug markets can be eradicated. They can't be eradicated. Drugs are always going to be here. They've always been here. They're never going to go away. I mean, as long as there's earth, people are going to be planting pot. They're going to be planting cocoa. That, that's just the way it is, and you're never going to stop it, and you could either tax it and make money off of it, which will take money away from the banks who launder it, as George Carlin said, and many others, or, um, or you could keep this fake war going and put people in prisons and create another cottage industry, which is, is this prison, prison industrial complex. So uh, what, what do you think on that, that, that the uh, Latin American leaders are finally coming together against the war on drugs? They're saying it's not working. We know it's not working. Yeah, it can, it can never be, you're correct, it can never be eradicated. Uh, whenever you hear a federal official, particularly a U.S. federal official, say that you, we can win the war on drugs, yes, we can eradicate the supply lines and so forth, you know that all this is is recycling of a failed philosophy and a failed initiative, which was the war on drugs, which was kind of launched under uh, President Ronald Reagan and taken to its zeitgeist level under President George Bush Sr. No, the, the war on drugs was a, a complete global failure. And all it's really done is it's, it's really empowered the organized crime aspects, the, the drug cartel aspects. It's made them very wealthy. 
It's made them very powerful over the last 20 or 30 years. And, and now it's to a point where it's so, the corruption is so deep into the system in countries like Mexico, uh, Honduras, Guatemala, um, Colombia, uh, and many other countries in, in South and Central America, and also now in the United States. So we all know that uh, an, a good percentage of the fresh cocaine that came into this country during the uh, mid, mid 80s, mid to late 80s, was coming in through Mena, Arkansas, uh, a few miles away from Governor Bill Clinton's mansion. And so we know very well about that operation and the numerous testimonies have been made about that. Not many people went to trial, unfortunately, and a lot of dead bodies turned up around the governor's mansion because of that operation. But obviously, one could uh, speculate that Bill Clinton did play his role in the Iran-Contra affair, uh, keeping that line open and keeping it under the radar. And he was paid handsomely only a few years later as he was fast-tracked from nowhere to become the Democrats' presidential nominee and eventually to become president. Sure. And I'd so. like to add, one of those dead bodies was a man named Barry Seal, who was a pilot, who mm -hmm. happened to have George H.W. Uh, Bush's phone number in his back pocket. Makes you wonder, who's really shipping the drugs out into this country? Hmm? And in the wake of the Fast and Furious scandal, where you have uh, the Department of Justice, and who is really meant to protect the American people, uh, trafficking something like 30,000 or more uh, heavy arms uh, and machine guns, AR-15s and these sort of things, trafficking these drugs into Mexico, into the hands of the drug cartels, and those guns are killing mm -hmm. Mexicans, American border agents, and God knows who else. So in the wake of the Fast and Furious, and that's been exposed, you'll find now that the federal agencies will be trying to wrap up as best they can some of these little wet operations they have running and uh, we could, uh, the Kevin Corley, uh, Corley gang, uh, uh, more furious scandal that we, we uncovered on Friday, that could very well be an attempt by the DEA to kind of uh, put a line under that particular operation. And who knows how long it's been going, what they've been doing, and how, how far back it goes. But certainly you can't put out of the realms of possibility that there is a, definitely a drug connection uh, with narcotics from Afghanistan into Europe and also into the United States. And also Afghanistan, I, I will remind everybody, is now the number one producer of marijuana on the planet, more than Jamaica, more than Mexico, more than Brazil. It's number one. Okay, that's according to the UN's own study. And that's uh, in 2009. Right. So it's number one in heroin and it's number one marijuana. And I'll tell you what, we're the best markets for these two drugs. And I'll tell you, they are United States and Europe. So it's not out of the realms of possibility that certain members who are doing multiple tours going back and forth between the U.S. and Afghanistan over a number of years will have formed the connections necessary mm -hmm. in order to play a role in the supply chain and using the military as cover. That's been going on since the Vietnam War. There's no point in Americans denying this, that this goes on. Yes, our boys do traffic drugs. Not right. all of not all of them, but there is a hardcore criminal element. And with the gangs infiltrating, uh, gang uh, gang members, organized gangs infiltrating the military, which is reported, you probably you can show a, a headline for that. That's a 2007. Mm -hmm. And also the military, uh, who is also recruiting ex-cons. So this is the perfect storm, Rob, for marrying what's going on overseas in terms of military theater and narcotics trafficking with the organized crime and the things that we're experiencing here within our borders in America. It's the perfect storm. I agree. The ex-con story is really disturbing, and that's from 2007. And mm -hmm. um, if you could, guys could throw that on screen. I mean, before, if you had any kind of record, you could not get into the Army, and now they're taking anybody. Sure. And, you know, and what do you expect? These guys go, they're guarding a poppy field, they're, they're bringing fertilizer to these guys, they're seeing money transfer for this stuff, and they, they see what's going on. And yeah, you know, what capitalist wouldn't go, hey, you know, I want a piece of the action. I want, I want to get in on that. And, and so you get a guy who's of rank, who's, he's a drill sergeant, you know, and, and he gets up into the system, he takes it further, and then he bring, comes back home and he spreads the wealth to his boys. And it's, and it's he's really working. disturbing. And he's working with uh, dozens of other military guys uh, to make these deals happen. Let's not be naive. You right. know, J Jimmy, J Jimmy, uh, John, John Boyd, 
Walton from Peoria, Illinois, doesn't know a damn thing about trafficking drugs or what to do with them. But I'll tell you, if, you, if you're from an organized gang in a major U.S. city, you know exactly when you see it, you know what it's worth, you right. know how to cut it, you know how to cut it, you know what the street value is, they'll do the math right, right in their head straight away. So they are definitely primed to be able to take these product from the end of the supply chain and put it onto the street. They are the guys who can do that end of the heavy lifting as far as any military uh, trafficking drugs into the United States from either Mexico or from Afghanistan or from anywhere else. And I'll tell you what, there are other countries uh, are doing exactly the same thing. Uh, the French military and any country that, or the British military, any country that has a navy overseas and has ships or has a major C-130 giant planes flying in and out with cargo, they have the ability to do exactly the same thing. And I can say off the record that I have can confirm reports that they are. I can't say specifics uh, because it was told to me in confidence, but that is the case. Well, I don't doubt that, and that's definitely going to come out. As more of this happens, people are going to slip up, and we'll find it, and we'll keep reporting on it. Uh, real quick, I want to I want to conclude here. Uh, you've got a, an article coming out about the Trevon Martin case. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going to be with, with that article tomorrow and what we can expect to see? Okay. Uh, firstly, there's a lot of uh, developments over the weekend with the Trayvon Martin case, but more so in, in the synchronicity that we're all, our brains are all working. Uh, Kurt Nemo was uh, psychically working on the same line as, as I was, and Alex ran with it this morning, talking about the race war in America. So I'm going to break down, firstly, in one article, I'm going to break down there is a race war which is being pushed and being engineered by the media and by political uh, partisan political interests in this country. And I'll tell you exactly, we know exactly where this race war is headed. And I'll talk about that tomorrow. And it's really headed towards what's the next phase of the race war is a class warfare. Okay, and that, that's already been primed by the Occupy movement over the last uh, six or eight months. The, the other thing is, I'm going to have some breaking news about what's happening with the actual George Zimmerman case, where it's going and what, where it's going to end up. And that'll be an InfoWars or an Alex Jones show exclusive. Uh, and this is information that uh, no, no one else in the media is really touching right now. We're going to be first on that. And also a few other things about fa a fake news story, which was pr put out and promoted by the Southern Poverty Law Center mm -hmm. uh, this, this past weekend. We're going to de fully debunk it. I've spoke to the uh, Sanford Police Department already. We've got a statement from them which debunks the story. And so that'll be all in the news tomorrow morning. Well, we look forward to that because the mainstream media seems to be only interested in pushing a race war, not in presenting facts a as they are. And, and so I can't wait to see that report tomorrow. Patrick, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll talk to you shortly. Thanks, Rob. All right. Well, that's our show today. Obviously, it's not good news. I mean, we have our troops coming home and dealing drugs with agents who are posed as gang members from Mexico. Um, we've got we've got the mainstream media trying to start a race war. And um, you know, I just want to say a little bit a little bit on this. Um, you know, don't don't fall for it. It's we're not we should not be fighting with each other, and that's what they want. You know, there is. Um, 99.5% in this quarter percent people, those are the ones that are controlling things. And those are the ones we need to expose. It's not the guy down the street. It's not the hillbillies down the hill. It's not even the gang members. We all need to figure out that we all have to be on the same team. We can't be preying on each other. I mean, I mean, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. We really have to watch out for this because the media is trying to start a race war. They would love to see this happen, and the police would love nothing more than to come in and crack people's heads, because then they'll be justified in doing it. So yeah, get prepared, get ready, but also inform yourselves of the true nature of what is going on, and, and do not listen to the Southern Poverty Law Center, because they don't care about poverty, they don't care about the, the Southerners, they don't care about anything but creating more division. That's what they're interested in, is creating more division. So uh, with that... I'm Rob Dew. This has been the InfoWars Nightly News. If you're watching this on YouTube, please consider subscribing. Uh, it allows us to buy more cameras, send people out to get reports, uh, hire more reporters. We're having our reporter contest right now. Um, there's still plenty of time. We have till the end of the month. You have till the end of the month to get in and submit. You only need a 10-minute or less video. Be sure you put your slate. Be sure you read the rules. I've been, I'm 
in charge of this contest, and I've been sending a lot of emails to people asking them to add their information. We want to know your name, what state you're from, and what you did on the video, whether it's writing, producing, the camera work, the editing. We want to know all that, and it makes you look good, too. So please put all that information there. You can put extra information, too, if you want. It, but put that information there. It's part of the rules. There's a reporter contest. We started it at the end of March. Uh, we only have, you know, four rules. We put some guidelines in there for some things we'd like to see. But, you know, we want people to wow us, too. We want to see what you can come up with. And we want to see how bad you want to be an InfoWars reporter. We've gotten a lot of great submissions. And a lot of people really, you know, interested in this. You know, we put no cap on submissions. So keep doing reports. All this is doing is putting more information out there in the mainstream that other people are going to come in and look at. And, you know, you never know. You may be... We may have the next Alex Jones submitting uh, a report here. We don't know that. I mean, it, it really is the sky's the limit, and it's up to you. You know, get off the couch. Don't be a couch potato. You know, get active in what we're doing. It's not hard. It doesn't have to look flashy. It's easy to take uh, simple stuff and make it look really good. I remember this one guy. Um, I forget his name offhand, but he, he did his slate. He wrote all the information on the back of his car and shot it for seven seconds. That's all you need to do. You can hold a poster board up. You can write it on the back of a, of a you know, milk carton, whatever. You know, just get the information in, make a good report, make it compelling, make it news. And we may even feature it here on the, on the nightly news. So get your entries in. You have uh, less than a month. And with that, I'll bid you good night. Till we see you tomorrow. It's InfoWars Nightly News.